In this lesson, we're continuing our discussion of hearsay. Specifically, we want to focus on constitutional limitations under the Sixth Amendment Confrontation Clause. So, what does the Confrontation Clause actually tell us? Well, the Sixth Amendment says that in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to be confronted with the witnesses against him. And essentially, this means two things. Number one, the criminal defendant in a criminal prosecution has the right to be present at his own trial. Number two, the criminal defendant has the constitutional right to be able to cross-examine witnesses against him in all criminal prosecutions, right? So two things. Number one, criminal defendant gets to be there. Criminal defendant gets to be present at his own prosecution. Number two, criminal defendant gets to cross-examine witnesses against him, right? These are constitutional rights guaranteed to criminal defendants by the Sixth Amendment Confrontation Clause. So immediately, you should see an issue, right? How do we reconcile this right to cross-examine witnesses with bringing in out-of-court statements from declarants who are unavailable. Remember, we said that there's lots of ways that we can bring in out-of-court statements where the declarant is unavailable through these enumerated exceptions under the federal rules of evidence. So if we're bringing in an out-of-court statement with, from a witness who's unavailable, how is the criminal defendant able to cross-examine that witness? Well, if they're unavailable, right, the criminal defendant cannot cross-examine that witness by definition, right? Imagine a dying declaration in a criminal homicide case, right? Let's say we have a witness who makes an out-of-court dying declaration that is admissible under the dying declaration exception to our hearsay rules, right? Well, let's say that that witness actually does die. They are not available. But that statement gets to come in as a dying declaration. Well, isn't that a violation of the defendant's Sixth Amendment right to confront witnesses against him? We now have this out-of-court statement that's coming in, and the criminal defendant is not able to cross-examine this declarant because they are dead, right? They're unavailable. So how do we reconcile these two things? Bringing in an out-of-court statement from a declarant who's no longer available with the, sixth, the, the, the criminal defendant's Sixth Amendment right to confront witnesses against him. Well, we have lots of case law that develops over the years. It grapples with this very issue. For decades, the case law develops and we have all of these unclear subjective tests on how to handle this until 2004. We get to Crawford v. Washington Court, right? The Supreme Court decides a landmark decision in 2004 in Crawford v. Washington where the Supreme Court makes this very easy for us. They say, enough with all of these subjective tests. They essentially erase 25 years of jurisprudence on this subject of the Confrontation Clause with hearsay exceptions in coming in. How do we reconcile it? And they say, in this court, Crawford v. Washington, Supreme Court tells us, look, if the statement is testimonial, it's a violation of the defendant's Sixth Amendment Confrontation Clause. If the statement is not testimonial, then it is not a violation of the defendant's constitutional rights. And it's that simple, right? So then the question becomes, well, what does it mean for a statement to be testimonial? And this is the trickier part of the analysis. But today, this is what it's almost primarily focused on, right? If we're doing a confrontation clause analysis, the major question is always going to be whether the out-of-court statement is testimonial or not testimonial. But let's break down all of these elements and really flesh out what the analysis looks like. So, Anytime that we have an out-of-court statement coming in where the declarant is not available, right? We want to think about this analysis on the board and we want to run through these elements, right? Because if the use of an out-of-court statement, even if it falls under a valid hearsay exception or testimonial privilege, violates the defendant's constitutional rights in the Confrontation Clause, it can be excluded, right? So how do we determine whether the defendant's constitutional rights under the Confrontation Clause are actually violated? Well, we have four elements. Number one, 
the proceeding has to be a criminal action. Remember, the Sixth Amendment only guarantees this right to confrontation in criminal prosecution. So number one, we want to make sure this isn't a civil action, that it is a criminal action. Number two, the declarant is unavailable to be cross-examined at trial. Again, right, this is the entire issue that we're dealing with, where the defendant does not have the opportunity to cross-examine the declarant. Right, so the declarant actually does have to be unavailable for cross-examination at trial. And with this, right, also the defendant could not have ever had the opportunity to cross-examine the declarant at a proceeding prior to trial. So if the declarant was available before and the defendant had a prior opportunity to cross-examine this declarant, then this does not apply, right? That's not a violation of the defendant's confrontation clause, Sixth Amendment right, because he did have the opportunity to confront this witness, okay? So these first three elements are very easy to see, very binary, not a whole lot of analysis. The facts are either gonna tell you that these are met or that they're not met, right? That should be very easy to see. Where your analysis is really going to happen is determining whether the statement is testimonial. Remember, Crawford v. Washington tells us, Supreme Court landmark decision, that this analysis rests on whether the out-of-court statement is testimonial. If the statement is testimonial, it is a violation of the defendant's Sixth Amendment right to confront witnesses against him. If the statement is not testimonial, then we have no Sixth Amendment violation, right? And so, what does it mean for a statement to be testimonial? Well, in Crawford v. Washington, the court lays out three different definitions, and the court actually doesn't adopt any of the definitions. They just say, here's some different definitions for you guys to think about. We're not going to tell you exactly how to apply any of these or how to adopt any of them, but we are going to give you some ideas. So they lay out some different definitions, and they basically say, okay, you guys go deal with this, and then you can come back to us later with more problems, and we'll tell you what we like and what we don't like, right? But if we look at these definitions and how the case law has evolved, you can really break it down to this, right? A statement is testimonial if the declarant would reasonably expect that the statement would be used for prosecution purposes, right? So off this definition, right, most out-of-court statements are not testimonial, right? Just when you're in every day talking out of court to people, right, those statements are not testimonial. You don't make those statements, typical out of court statements for the purpose of prosecutorial purposes, right? So where would we typically think about a declarant reasonably expecting a statement to be used for prosecution purposes? Well, anytime that law enforcement gets involved, this is where the eyebrow needs to raise, where we might say, okay, now this might be testimonial. When a person is dealing with law enforcement, right, statements made to police, that's where a person might begin to reasonably expect that their statements are going to be used for prosecution purposes, right? If a detective calls you on the phone and says, hey, you know, we're investigating so-and-so for this crime. We'd like to ask you a few questions. Can you come by sometime and give us some statements, right? Well, immediately in your head, you're thinking, wow, okay, they might be prosecuting this guy. Any statements that you make to that detective are now going to likely be testimonial, right? Because you could reasonably expect, right, that these out-of-court statements would be used for prosecution purposes. Thank you so much for watching this video preview of our Legal Education Accelerator Program, or LEAP for short. If you would like to see the conclusion of this video and gain full access to our entire 1L and 2L video library, integrated outlines, streamable audio versions, additional practice exams with explanations, and much more, we invite you to head over to our website and join the thousands of law students who have already enrolled. To get started with your no-risk free trial today, simply click the link in the description box below or visit www.studicata.com forward slash leap.
Hi everyone, my name is Serena and I'm currently a law student at South Texas College of Law, Houston. Hi everybody, uh, my name is Shiva and I'm currently a law student at Southwestern. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle um, and I am a first year student at South Texas College of Law, Houston. Um, I used the Studicata study video series last semester to help me prepare mostly for contracts um, and I actually made an A plus in contracts last semester which I greatly dedicate to the Studicata video. By using Studicata to help me prepare for my final exam, I was able to score the highest grade out of my class on the final and even have my uh, essay distributed as the model answer. Not to mention I had done quite poorly on the midterm and was struggling throughout the whole course of the semester, understanding the material and keeping up with lectures. Because of the Studicata video lectures, I was able to go into my exams with a feeling of confidence. I didn't have to worry about what the rules of law were or how I was going to organize my answer to an essay question. I would absolutely recommend the Studicata series and their online course materials to anyone. Um, I think that they are not like um, professor lectures that you might find online or other outside study materials that you may encounter. Um, I think that the Studicata videos really focus on not only ensuring that you understand the material that you're going to encounter on your final, um, but they also help you to understand kind of the best method for test taking and they really break down how to approach each problem and the best ways to tackle certain methods on testing um, and I think that's really important and I think it's really special. I don't see that anywhere else um, in any of the other online resources that I've found. So I would certainly recommend Sudakata to anyone who is studying in law school right now. Um, good luck on your studying and you're going to do great. I would definitely uh, recommend Studicata to anybody watching this video. Uh, give it a chance. I'm sure, I'm positive, that you will love it, uh, that you will get a lot out of it, uh, and that you will be happy that you gave it a chance. Uh, I definitely am. I know I will be using uh, Studicata in the future. And I cannot thank Studicata enough for getting me through my first semester of law school. I will definitely, definitely continue to watch the Studicata video lectures throughout my law school career. And I highly recommend that any future or current law student do the same.